What's going on my people? Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Quando Belay and this is another Chelsea transfer news daily video for you guys where I keep you guys up to date with all the latest Chelsea news in the past and for hours we'll be delving into all the latest rumours and news surrounding Chelsea. We'll be speaking about Jorginho and a potential contract extension. I'll be delving into Fabrizio Romano's podcast and Twitch live stream where he delved into all the latest Chelsea news, talked about Jorginho's contract extension, talked about Chelsea potentially signing a centre-back if the opportunity arises and a specific name in Jules Conde. We'll also be speaking about his situation on the strikers. He's already stated for Fabrizio on the live Twitch stream that Chelsea will 100% sign a striker. We'll be delving into that and of course speaking about other numerous stuff such as Declan Rice and of course Hakim Ziyech situation. But before I do get into it, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification and comment down below your thoughts and opinions on the story that I do speak about. But without further ado, let's get straight into this news daily and starting off with the Jorginho talks now according to Fabrizio Romano, Chelsea will open talks with Jorginho over a new contract in the next months, but nothing so far is imminent, nothing is close. And this is completely understandable. We heard the rumours a few weeks ago that Jorginho may be extending his contract alongside Nicola Kante. And we need to speak about Jorginho's importance. You know, he's still underrated by a lot of this fan base. And a lot of you guys that don't rate Jorginho, I, I want to understand why. You know, I need to understand your perspective. And any of you guys that are watching this video now and you don't rate Jorginho, you believe we need to sell Jorginho, please comment down below why you think so. Because for me, he's world class. And I'm going to give you my reasons in a second. But... Ever since he signed for Chelsea, I've always believed he's a world-class player. Yes, people say he's a system player, but what he does for this team is, is immaculate. If you look at his record and win percentage for Chelsea when he starts games, compared to games that he doesn't feature in, it's absolutely staggering. More respect needs to be put on his name in terms of what he provides for this team. He makes the team tick. He controls the tempo of the game. He controls matches on his own. The way that he's passing, his diagonal switches, his defensive work rate. A lot of people also underrate his defensive work rate. They think that you know he hasn't got the face yet, that he hasn't got the pace, nor has he got the physicality to deal with the threat but he covers a lot more ground than a lot of DMs in um, in the Premier League he makes more forward passes than any other DM in the Premier League he covers the most ground he makes the most tackles and interceptions in terms of the position he plays obviously Kante plays a lot higher up and he controls and anchors that midfield he's so pivotal he allows Chelsea to beat the press and play outside and for me it's so crucial that we extend his contract because the way Thomas Tuchel wants to play the way that he's operating he was a crucial part, an integral part of the team for us to win the Champions League as well as, you know, get to the FA Cup final and finish in the top four this season. Of course, he has his bad moments. We know this, you know, the West Brom game, the Aston Villa game, potentially in the Cup final against Leicester. Of course, but what player doesn't have a bad game? Even Lionel Messi and Hazard, these players have bad games. It's natural. But for some reason, when he has a good game, it's underrated. It goes under the radar. When he has a poor performance, it gets highlighted and he gets made a scapegoat. Enough is enough. More respect needs to be put on Jorginho's name because for me, as I said, for what he provides to his team, he's simply world class. And I'm so happy that Fabrizio has confirmed that Chelsea are looking to extend his contract. Now, of course, he is going to be 30 soon or if he's not uh, 30 already. Um, but he will be extending his contract, and that's good. I think that with the position that he plays, his style of play, he can easily play at you know, a top level until he's, you know, what, 34, 35 years of age. So for me, a three, four year contract is perfect. And again, he's an integral part of the team, and Thomas Tuchel loves him. So again, more respect needs to be put on his name, and I'm so happy that it looks likely that Jorginho will be extending his contract at Chelsea. But what do you guys think? Leave me your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. But moving on to some other news, and it is in regards to the centre-back situation. Fabrizio talks about how Chelsea could sign a, suit, a new centre-back this summer if the opportunity arises in the transfer market. Now, we have heard names such as Jules Koundé. Now, Jules Koundé is also on Tottenham Hotspur's list. Tottenham Hotspur are looking to do a revamp, of course. Nuno Santos being announced as their new manager. They're going to be looking to revamp and bolster their squads. Of course, centre-back is a priority for Tottenham. And Fabrizio has confirmed that Jules Koundé is, is high on the priority list for Tottenham. I wouldn't say that is similarly the case of Chelsea. It's not a case where Kunde is high on, our, high on our list, only because centre-backs is not really high on the list at the moment. The main priority, the main crucial integral part next season is that number nine position. Chelsea will need to look to sign a world-class striker. I'll be delving into striker situation in a second, but I've said this <clears throat> daily. I've said this numerous amounts of time. I've said this numerous amounts of time, but Chelsea will definitely be looking to sign a striker. That's 
absolutely inevitable. Chelsea will 100% look to sign a striker this summer and 100% do sign a striker because it's a position that we need to strengthen. You know, Fabrizio has already confirmed that. And as a result of Chelsea are going to be spending significant, you know, astronomical amounts in that department, then of course, Chelsea aren't going to be desperate for a centre-back. And of course, if other clubs like Tottenham have, couldn't they hire on their priority list? then they're going to be more eager and more aggressive in the market to pursue the likes of a Kunde. But that doesn't mean that Chelsea won't go into the market for a Kunde. Chelsea do admire Kunde. Chelsea would like to be open for negotiations to sign Kunde because, of course, if we are switching to four at the back, we're only going to need four centre-backs. You've got two centre-back spots and you need two centre-backs for covers. So currently we have Andreas Christensen, who we are currently in contract negotiations with, who's been a world-class centre-back so far. Really good again, another one that we're in contract negotiations with. Let's say hypothetically those two players today. And then you've got the likes of a Thiago Silva who's already extended his contract for next season. And then you've got Kurt Zuma on top of that as well. Now that's the thing. The only way I see Chelsea signing a centre-back like a Kunde or a Marquinhos or someone of that elite calibre or even a Rafael Varane is if a Kurt Zuma left because Kurt Zuma has been surplus to requirements. The only way I see Chelsea signing a centre-back is if Kurt Zuma decided that he needs the game time because let's face it, He's not rated by Thomas Tuchel because he's not a ball-playing centre-back. He's uncomfortable on the ball and for his own sake, his own growth and development and if he wants to burst into that French team for next year's World Cup, he needs to ensure that he gets sufficient game time week in, week out. And he's not going to get that at Chelsea because he has to break Christensen, Rüdiger and Thiago Silva's position and currently out of those four centre-backs, Kurt Zuma is fourth choice. You know, you can't dispute that. You can't argue with that. And of course, he is not rated by Thomas Tuchel just like how Tammy Abraham is not rated by Thomas Tuchel. So, as I said, the only way I see a centre-back coming in, is if Kurt Zuma decided that he needs a game time, he's going to be leaving Chelsea. And of course, if Chelsea got the right offer for Kurt Zuma, that's the only way. I can't see Chelsea signing and slashing big on the centre-back where we have five centre-backs. It doesn't make sense for two spots. So, as I keep stressing, Kurt Zuma would have to leave if Chelsea were to sign a centre-back. That Moving on to the midfield situation, according to Fabrizio, Chelsea's midfield priority is West Ham's Declan Rice this summer. Aurelien Tushiemeni is a possible option for the Blues. Now, according to Care for Youth, he's got Patreon, he's got some exclusive transfer news on there. He's confirmed that Aurelien Tushiemeni is unlikely to sign for Chelsea um, this summer for a number of reasons. Now, the main reason is that he's very happy with his lifestyle Monaco. He loves the weather, the food, and of course, his growth and development is exceeding at a perfect rate. He's, you know, enjoying his time and development in Monaco. He would like to stay there at least another season. And of course, he's not guaranteed to start for Chelsea next season. So, of course, he would want those guarantees to start. And Chelsea simply can't because we have a world-class midfield. He's still relatively young. He would have to adapt to the Premier League. And for him, in his so early in his career, it's unlikely that Tushi Emeni would want to move this early. So I think that Tushi Emeni is off for this summer. However, it doesn't mean that Tushi Emeni won't become a Chelsea player in the future. It just means it does rule him out for this summer. And of course, we know that Declan Rice is Chelsea's priority number one choice. And of course, West Ham, they would like to keep Declan Rice as one of their best players. They're going to be looking to get, you know, 90 to 100 million pounds, even though they won't get anywhere near that for that valuation. Declan Rice currently has four years left on his contract, so West Ham have all the negotiating power. Chelsea believe they can get him for around 60 to 70 million pounds, which is, of course, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that one. Do I see Declan Rice signing with Chelsea this summer? Not necessarily. I think that because West Ham have got the power, because Declan Rice is tied up to a long-term contract, and of course they're going to be reluctant to sell him, they've got the Europa League football as well to entice and of course incentivise Declan Rice to stay. Um, and of course, Declan Rice is young because he's got a long time for him to move to Chelsea. And of course, Chelsea sorting out the striker situation. I don't think Chelsea are going to be desperate to sign a Declan Rice this summer. So personally, I don't see it materialising this summer, but you might see it maybe next summer or in the future summers. So let's wait and see on that situation. Now, continuing on with the midfield situation, again, according to Fabrizio, Chelsea were one of the clubs to make an inquiry about Atletico Madrid midfielder Saul Niguez. Now, of course, this is very interesting because we, I haven't really spoken about Saul Niguez much. I've maybe made one or two videos on Saul Niguez, but yes, it's been confirmed. Chelsea have made an inquiry for Saul Niguez. And according to a Tier 1 Atletico Madrid outlet, Chelsea have actually proposed an unofficial bid on the table. So let's see what happens there. He has got a current release clause of £120 million. Of course, Chelsea are not going to activate or pay anywhere near that. But according to various reports, we're not sure the credibility or the reliability but it could be available for between 35 to 45 million pounds 
counts. For me, it's a bargain, you know. Very, very technical, gifted player. Good on the ball. Really good defensive work, great in defensive cover. Again, really good in terms of passing range, dictating games. He's got a creative side to him as well. He's creative in what he does. He can play in a versatile number of positions. The number eight position, number 10 uh, in the pivot as well. And again, defensively very good. I think overall in terms of the full package, Sal Niguez is a top, top player. And for the right price, I would love for Chelsea to sign Sam Niguez because you need quality and depth in many of these positions and I think that if you're going to compete on all four fronts you need to have quality and depth in all positions but let's move on to some other news and it is in regards to Hakim Ziyech now according to Corredo della Sport Italian publication Hakim Ziyech still occupies the first position in AC Milan's list of targets for the role of attacking midfielder but it will be a long and difficult operation because Milan are aiming to snatch Ziyech on loan before the end of the video. Now, the end of the window. Now, this is really annoying me. This is really annoying me with these Italian clubs now. I'm talking Inter Milan. I'm talking AC Milan. I'm talking Napoli. These clubs do my head in. I swear to God. When it comes to big clubs like Chelsea... Yeah, when it comes to rich elite European clubs coming into Syria, diving to sign players, they're commanding 70, 80 million pounds. Cough, cough, ha Ashraf Hakimi. Yeah, you're commanding big, big money, big boy fees for these players. But then suddenly, when you want our players, yeah, oh, we haven't got the finances. We haven't got the money. Can we, can we take him on loan, please, sir? Can we take him on loan with an option to buy? And then you send them on loan. And they never activate the options of the buy. Or if they do activate it, they try and haggle the fee down. They try and take the absolute piss like they did with Tomori. We had to force them to essentially activate that buyback, the, the options of buy, because Tomori performed so well at AC Milan. That's the only way. And they still got Tomori on the cheap as well. It's like this. They command 80 million for Akimi, But then when it's their turn to pay up, oh, we'll take him on loan. It's an absolute piss take. It's, it's criminal. Daylight robbery. Shouldn't be happening. For me, simple as that. If you want Hakim Ziyech, you pay up. We're not sending him on loan. How many players have we got on loan? Enough is enough now. You want Ziyech? Cool. You want to sign Ziyech? That's perfectly fine. Put the money on the table and you can have him. Don't come up with these loan proposals. It's absolute rubbish. It is rubbish. I'm not accepting that. It's terrible. And that shouldn't happen. But again, what do you guys think? Leave me your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. But that is me wrapping up the news, Eddie. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and I'll see all of you guys for another video. Peace.